Welcome to the Purposeful Fitness with Coach Ola, where I dive in deeper into holistic health and fitness topics that will help you stay inspired, motivated, and dedicated to living a purposeful fit life while pursuing for the Akhirah. Hey, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 15th episode with Coach Ola. Today's guest is Zahra Kovani, who is a mom of two boys, a personal trainer, and a former English and Spanish teacher. We will talk about how to set goals for Ramadan, how to eat healthy during Ramadan, as well as throughout our entire life. And she will share with us her tips and tricks as a mom during Ramadan and how Ramadan helps her as a parent become a better parent and how she helps her kids see Ramadan a different a month besides just fasting. So exciting. So let's get started and welcome Zahra. Hey, Salam Alaikum, Zahra, how are you today? Hey, Salam Alaikum. So happy and excited to be here today. Yay. Would you please tell us about yourself? So I'm Zahra Gouvani. I live in Sweden and I'm a former teacher. I taught Spanish and English at high school, but I have actually uh, changed a little bit of course uh, when it comes to uh, my occupation. So I found a new passion, which is very much anything, you know, health, health and well-being and, you know, lifestyle changes and all that. And a lot of this came up when uh, I was thinking of, uh, you know, really taking my own uh, health seriously and also make you know a true investment in myself both when it comes you know mentally but also physically and uh, one thing led to the other and you know taking this health awareness to the next level required you know some education to really really educate myself on uh, what it is that actually promotes good health and also a good healthy mind because uh, we have actually many of us struggle with how we actually perceive ourselves decided to uh, take a personal fitness certification or, or yeah join a course and be a personal trainer uh, to be certified and see you know from you know from that place so I decided, you know, to make a true investment in myself and my health. And that's why I thought that, hey, you know what? I don't want to uh, do the whole university thing from scratch again. So let's see, you know, if there's a course on health and uh, fitness that I could, you know, take and see, you know, where that would lead me. And yeah, so I found this online fitness per personal trainer course. Uh, I and uh, I got certified and from there, you know, I hope to uh, find ways to work around health, fitness and also, you know, personal development because there's a lot of personal development involved in this new lifestyle that uh, many of us find ourselves in when we are taking our health, you know, more seriously. So that's, you know, me. So Zahra, tell us when it comes to Ramadan, I love how you talk about goal setting and you're a mom yourself and you understand the struggles that we go through Ramadan. So tell us when it comes to your goal setting during the month, how do you set up your goals? Well, I think it's very important that we all actually, be, well, let me put it this way. We all have like this, you know, wonderful wish and longing uh, for, for the holy month. And all of us have, you know, this expectation that we would like to, you know, become better, you know, afterwards, you know, after Eid, we would like to have become better persons or better versions of ourselves. And I think there's, I think everybody has that attitude. But the, I think the most important question here is what exactly is it that you would like to have improved? Because wanting and wishing to just become better and leaving the month, you know, stronger is not enough in order for you to actually become better. Now, there's a lot of, you know, divine assistance in this month, uh, without a doubt. I mean, I think the presence of God, or actually I think it's not the presence of God because it's always around us, you know, but us being more connected to him during this month is a great, great 
ground groundwork for us, you know, to establish good habits and also, you know, achieving those goals and becoming, you know, that better version of ourselves because there is, you know, this divine, well, I don't know how I can really express it, but we feel stronger and the presence of God is 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 closer and we feel like we can achieve anything, right? And with this outset, I think it's very important that we actually define what exactly is it that we would like to have become stronger in, in what field is it that we would like to have improved our ibadat, like is it the performance of uh, the different acts, you know, as a Muslim actually carries out during a day? Uh, or is it that you would like to have learned how to uh, cook, you know, more nutritious foods for your for your family or for yourself? So it's very important to set a goal on what exactly you want to have improved during this month. And the groundwork for improvement, like the divine assistance that is there, is, you know, the greatest setup for you to succeed. Now, one of the most important things here before we actually sit down and make a plan and set goals for ourselves is to actually set quite small goals. I know that it might, you know, contradict just what I said because because the divine presence and because of, you know, the holiness of this month, we should aim for, you know, great, you know, goals. I think, however, if you want to give yourself the chance to succeed in becoming the better version of yourself, then you must set goals that you think are, you know, somehow attainable and manageable for you. I, I think, you know, going for those lofty goals could be could be a bit intimidating. You want to you want to give your ch- give yourself the chance to win. You don't want to feel like you've lost during this month. So before you actually set any goals, try to be some sort of a practic- pragmatic about it. I know it sounds boring, but we also need to be practical, right? I mean, if you are a mom of three or four or even two or one, you know life is going to be very hectic. So you need to sit down and prioritize exactly in what areas you would like to do what, right? Yes, and that's why I love, I talk about, when I talk about Ramadan goal setting, I like to categorize it, but I also got that idea and concept also from productive Muslim and other few people that I like their tips, but I'm very big also on like categorizing our goals. So, you know, there's a spiritual aspect of Ramadan. There's also the family aspect or the relationship health aspect. There's the mental health and all of that. So you can say like one goal per category, for example, whether it's a uh, read a Quran, one, one just or what have you, or it could be, I want to improve my relationship with my parents, my wife, my husband, and so forth. Exactly. I I totally agree. And um, something that is very important is, uh, you know, this general want amongst us, you know, that we want to become better is not enough. We have to um, accommodate that want and wish together with an action. Because, you know, just wanting and wishing to become this better version of ourselves is not going to be enough. We have to accept the fact that we will have to take actions. And just as you said, it's really important to uh, have these different categories. And yet again, Ola, I would like to um, emphasize on on the uh, importance of not overloading ourselves too much, especially, you know, if we are responsible for for certain areas in a family, you know, we have different responsibilities. And if you're a mom, you're a dad, then you're going to have a little bit more responsibilities than if you are unmarried, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, don't overload yourself. You want to give yourself the chance to succeed. So before the month of Ramadan actually starts, you need to ask yourself, what is it that you want to improve? Now, you know, with that attitude in mind that we will not overload ourselves too much, find those two, three, four categories you want to improve on. It is, as you said, it could be, you know, your health, uh, it could be mental health, it could be uh, what you would like to do, you know, community-wise, and it could be, you know, your personal goals that you would like to set for yourself. You, you have to make a plan. You can't just, you know, wish things to happen. In order for you to succeed, you need to 
sit down, take that time before Ramadan actually starts. Help your mind, you know, prepare it for what is coming by, you know, taking up a pen and start writing and setting and making out this plan for yourself. If you do not if you do not plan, if you fail to plan, then you have planned to fail, right? So it's really important that you ask yourself the important questions that are going to make you succeed in that certain category. Take the prayer, for instance. If you if you want to set a goal for yourself that you want to you want to start performing your prayer on time, that is like the only goal you actually want to set for yourself. What is going to be required for you to be able to succeed with that? Now, that question is going to trigger a lot of small answers, right? Like, it would mean that you will have to plan your day better, and it would mean that you would have to perhaps, you know, leave that conference 10 minutes earlier, you know, you would have to t start taking certain measures in order for you to carry on that goal, right? Yes, exactly. And we don't want to make it overwhelming that it gets too stressful to achieve. Exactly. And I think it's very, very important that you find ways of making your plan work because the goals that you set for yourself, there is no one else, you know, who's going to be able to answer those important questions it's only you so you have to find ways to make that work for you so zahra what is your approach then to the month of ramadan being a mom with two beautiful sons <laughs> i think uh, the uh, the holy month is a great opportunity for mothers and fathers you know start talking not start but at least you know continue talking about our religion because you know having these different gatherings probably at um, you know your 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 with your family and uh, at mosque it's going to contribute you know to that uh, Christmassy feeling, you know, but the Ramadani feeling yes. and having that, you know, permeating during these 28, 29 days is a great groundwork for, for the mothers and fathers out there to actually start talking more about Ramadan. And I think we are all going to bring up different things, you know, because we are individuals with which find, you know, different parts of Ramadan important. So you need to also figure out what exactly is it that you would like to emphasize more on during this month together with your family and your children. So for me, I think, you know, connecting and uh, and learning more about the uh, book of Allah is really important, you know, is a really great opportun opportunity to talk about this great scripture that we have and all the lessons that we can learn from it. So uh, even here, you know, it's really important that we make set aside a bit of time every day. It doesn't have to be, you know, long hours. It, it suffices, you know, with 10, maximum 15 minutes because kids really don't have that great attention span, you know, concentration. So uh, just, you know, make it very short and sweet. Take 10, 15 minutes and talk about perhaps, you know, sadaqah, you know, what is it that our scripture teaches about sadaqah and what is it, you know, how can we do sadaqah? So I think it's a great opportunity to talk about our religion and also, you know, saying that learning is one thing, but the action is actually what is going to make that, you know, a part of ourselves. So perhaps, you know, connecting that sadaqah lesson with actually going out and doing some sadaqah, you know, doing some charity work, uh, either in our own mosque or, you know, where we live, you know, or in our neighborhood or, you know, in our community. So, you know, it's very important that our kids see our teachings actually paired with an action early on. Uh, and it's not, it shouldn't suffice they hear about it. Whenever you perform an act, you actually manifest that particular teaching. So it's really important that they see the act and they do the act themselves. So learn about the act, see the act performed, preferably by mother and father, and then perhaps doing the act themselves. So true. And that's what I'm a huge fan of. Uh, hope and so like, you know, <laughs> I'm not a parent, but I agree with you because a lot of times kids will, will only 
act upon what their parents do, not what their parents tell them to do. So it's a big thing. Then I would like to know, because every month of Ramadan, a lot of people take this month as an excuse to indulge and overeat. So what is your approach to food and drinks during Ramadan? I think it's very important that we have this clarity of what kind of attitude and relationship we have with food. And depending on what we, what kind of attitude we, the adults in the family have, that's the kind of attitude, you know, that the kids also are going to pick up upon. So if we talk about, you know, iftar being this great release, you know, and relief for for our hunger, you know, we've been looking, we've been like counting down, you know, the hours and the minutes just, you know, in order to be able to just stuff our faces full with food. Uh, that's going to give a signal to the kids like what Ramadan is really about. It's just about starving yourself for, uh, you know, a period of time and then you just stuff your face, you know. But if you actually have like a purposeful attitude about food and, and, and you know, how we relate and connect with food, that's going to uh, leave them with another understanding. And I think the greatest understanding about food is actually to eat, to nourish your to, to nourish your body, you know, performing, you know, Salat al-Layl or, you know, performing extra acts of worship during this month is highly, highly recommended. And you can't do that. You, if you have, you know, your belly full with stomach, you still want to feel like you can actually do those extra acts of worship. And if you want to do that, then you have to actually feed your body in a manner that helps you to have a focus on uh, the act of worship that you want to do. If you just go out and eat like crazy much food, you know how that's going to make you feel. It's going to make you feel like you want to sleep and probably drowsy or just, you know, pass out on the sofa for a couple of hours. Each minute and in each breath, you know, during the holy month is an act of worship and uh, just add, you know, any extra act of worship other than, you know, just breathing, you're going to go out, you know, leave this month as a very rich in, in a spiritual manner person. So feed your body, feed your body with the foods that you know are going to give you the opportunity to do those extra acts of worship that you have set a goal of to do. Yeah, so I think it's very important that we we find out, you know, this is also something that we need to do before Ramadan. We need to find out what kind of foods are extra nutritious, you know, that are going to feel, uh, keep me, you know, full, but uh, also, you know, keep regulate those highs and lows of sugar, you know, so that you don't feel like you're so drowsy and tired like avoid the rice, the pasta, the breads and stuff like that because it's going to give you a really high spike of insulin, right? And it's going to make you very drowsy. So perhaps you should you should finish and end your your eating window with those foods rather than, you know, start your your iftar with uh, that, you know, feasty food which is going to be you know the rice and the curries and the breads and all that because that food is going to make you feel sleepy and drowsy whilst you know more plant-based um, foods are going to actually give you the nutrition that you're going to need in order to uh, to be able to be more active after iftar i hope that was a bit clear Yes, and I love how you said purposeful food. I'm like, yes, purposeful fitness. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I love that concept, you know, with yeah, your podcast name. <laughs> yeah, I do. Thank you so much. But no, you're right. And it's interesting how you said to cut rice. So then for you, what do you have for iftar and suhoor? If you like, what do you replace with rice bread for your family? Rice bread, I think potatoes are actually a very good food. Mm -hmm. I know they're very high in carbs, but still it's got a bit more vitamins and it's still going to make you feel, you know, satiated. So it's, it's still going to make you feel satisfied. That's what I wanted to say. It's going to feel you, it's going to make you feel satisfied as if, you know, you've stilled that carb hunger, you know, that you have, you know, having a lot of 
fruits and vegetables is really high in fiber because I find many people, they struggle with constipation during Ramadan because uh, they prioritize eating, you know, the rice and the breads and stuff, you know, that is, isn't very high in fiber. So perhaps start, you know, with a, a you know, big bowl of salad and make that make that the the head star of the of the table and the other things a bit smaller and and don't put too much there so that you can see that there are okay there are just eight spring rolls like big ones right so you just take two of them the salad is the main thing that you start with so for me having salads and fruits you know open your iftar with that is great and also a soup is very uh, recommended you know something with lentils and beans and, and chickpeas they have carbs but they are very good carbs and the fibers are also very high in this kinds of food, which is going to uh, prevent you from that, you know, high spike of insulin, which is going to make you feel energized and not sluggish after after iftar. Also something that I would love to just mention is that, uh, you know, we are often, as, as you know, Ramadan is also this great social thing for us. We are most of the time is, you know, invited to different gatherings and different uh, happenings and majalis and stuff like that. And there will be food there, you know, there will be very nice, savory food. And if you have decided, you know, that you want to eat purposefully and you want to really nourish your body when you do this iftar, then make sure to bring something yourself to this gathering or to this happening so that there will be something for you as well well. I know that I usually before I used to struggle with this. I was always very skeptical to, to actually attend these majalis because I was thinking a lot about my health and diet. So I would not go. But then I found out, hey, I can actually contribute something to the sofra. And uh, I can also, you know, make people aware of it, that you can actually eat, you know, healthy green stuff uh, for iftar as well. And also it made me, it, it gave me the opportunity to actually attend as well and, and take part of that festivity atmosphere that actually is a part of, of Ramadan. So we can celebrate, but we can celebrate with healthiness. And yeah. So Zahra, tell me about your culture background, if you don't mind, just because I know a lot of Muslims are from different ethnic backgrounds, cultures, but I, I myself as an Arab, you know, we have a lot of rice and bread and my family and I have a lot of Afghan friends, Pakistani friends, and I know it's normal to have a lot of lovely bread and rice. So how do you go about it with your cultural food? So I am born in Iran, but my parents are from Afghanistan. So I'm well aware of what kind of food is well perceived to serve to guests okay so i know that if there isn't you know a big big plate of nice you know basmati rice then you as a hostess will feel that uh, you you might think that your guests are going to feel offended if you put forth you know a big yeah. big plate of broccoli <laughs> instead right because they're going to feel like hey i'm not a cow right uh, because that's that's usually what you would give a cow in 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 afghanistan now i don't know if there are any broccolis in afghanistan but i think i think that you have to you have to you have to have the guts to start serving something else you know me as as a hostess i find it very hard to actually call people over because i know that they first of all prefer to have some sort of a meaty or chickenish dish and i don't I, I don't eat that myself and I don't want to serve that to people either. So I'm always like in a conundrum, like, okay. Do you so, eat meat at all? Yeah. No, we don't eat meat. So, uh, sure. okay. yeah. So I'm like, what should we serve them? And this has prevented me from actually calling people over because I'm always like, what should we serve them? But anyways, I've come, I've, I've left that behind me and I'm like, they should just accept, you know, that mm -hmm. this is what they're going to, to be served. And this is good, high nutritious food, you know? So I think it's you have to to be have the guts to to go against the crowd here, right? So don't always feel like you, there has to be bread on your table uh, if you have guests over. Now with what with your own family, I mean, you can you know make them uh, you you can work with them in a in in a complete different way, right? Like you talk about it and you have certain you talk about the what kind of foods you want you you value. So when it comes to rice, bread and pastas, I think it's 
you should go about it not like dropping a bomb directly like there will be nothing of this you know at all at my place or I will never eat that again you should take it in small steps like perhaps start talking about it like did you know that having this much carb isn't really good you know for your blood level blood sugar levels and you can start talking about it you know raising the awareness of how the food we are eating actually affects us now everybody likes to be healthy the unhealthy would like to be healthy and the healthy would like to remain healthy. So we have a great opportunity here to actually create understanding when it comes to the foods we eat. And I think it's really important that we talk about what, when should we eat what? Like when it comes to weekdays, it's not necessary for us to eat as it was a feast, you know. We don't have to feast every day. Save it for one day, in the week like a Sunday or a Saturday and have a nice savory f meal in this way we, we also honor the food more right so I you know it's really hard for a lot of people I am pretty sure even myself because I love rice I love bread so it's a great time to try to cut a little bit out and my recommendations is if you're not comfortable yet to cut the whole thing out then don't do it again everyone is different everybody like a human body is different so these recommendations are generic. You need to figure out your own body and your own self and see what works for you. And that's the diet lifestyle that I would like to promote. Because I know plant-based is healthy for you. I know it's a different meaning for plant-based. And I know every person, family has their own situation. Because for me, if I were to tell my parents, like, heck, we're going to cut, every like, we're not going to have any more rice or bread. It's not going to happen. There's no way it's going to happen. I know my family. But I, on an individual level, I'll do my best and you know keep trying but i just want to people that are listening to keep that in their perspective in their mind i totally agree and something that i miss saying was that try to eat more of what you like don't you know go for the broccoli and the cauliflower if you don't like it i mean of course we all find you know rice and bread tasty but there are some vegetables that are very tasty you just need to find out which ones you really like and do more of that and you know cut a little bit like have perhaps rice just once a week or bread you know just once or twice a week and then you know add more of of the vegetables that you like so if you're having like a chicken curry you don't have to have it with rice perhaps that particular day you could have it with uh, well I don't know what would go well with that potatoes so maybe can you have Potato potatoes yes I love potatoes. carbs I'm telling you I love carbs so yes. if you I can cut the whole out <laughs> There is, you know, a, a diet called high carb diet. So yeah, no, 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 not like that. Like I, like I said, you know my, you know my moderation <laughs> mentality. <laughs> yeah, I know, and and I, I find it very commendable. Yeah. No, no, I find it commendable because if you are strong, if you are that strong that you can actually taste of something, you know, just have a taste mm -hmm. and don't and then and don't like go all in as I have to do, then mm -hmm. I find you very, very strong. I, I mean, I know about this. Um, I wouldn't wouldn't say weakness, but I know of my uh, of my attitude towards just tasting something. I know so I need. Goes, to... Yeah, that goes back to knowing yourself, and that's why exactly. I want to repeat to my know yourself, know what you can handle. So Ramadan again is not the month to detox, to no. like go all out. So please use common sense and take it as a tip. <laughs> exactly, and I think. I think that if we want to perf if we want to take if if we want to become you know these better versions of ourselves during this month then you know if we do not take care of our bodies in the way it's supposed to be taken care of and I'm taking I'm talking about um in a generic sense right it, don't overdo anything but the way I mean with it's supposed to be taken care of is that we should feed our body and not you know feed our mind and our our desires yes if we want to take out you know bring and take the best out of this month which i would say is actually becoming a more spiritual and and you know connect better with god then you you know it's not possible for us to do that if we are not healthy uh, if we do not you know have this healthy nutrition in um, in our lives because 
if we do not have that energy to be able to do more spiritual acts, you know, then it's not possible for us to become that better version. Do, do you understand what I mean? Like the yes. body, the yes. body is the requirement. It's the requirement for us to actually perform those extra acts of good deeds and becoming that better version of ourselves. If we only put in, you know, foods that are going to make us tired, then perhaps we will not, you know, leave this month more spiritual and more connected both to our community, to ourselves and to God. So true. And I know you're in Sweden and you have a l- more longer hours than here in the United States oh for me. God, yes. So how do you go with it? Because I know it's a lot harder for up north and so many other countries around the world. Yeah, it's really, really hard. And you just have to you just have to plan, you know, what you are, are going to eat better, I'd say, because um, we my husband and I, we uh, prioritize, you know, having enough liquids and just, you know, hydrating ourselves. That's, you know, the most important one. So soups are, for instance, very, very important. We we like to eat, you know, watermelons and melons and fruits, you know, with high amount of water. And also, you know, the fibers is very, very important because we want to avoid, you know, becoming constipated and also just, you know, finishing the iftar, you know, the eating window with uh, something more heavier as, you know, like a coconut vegetable curry with with uh, a lot of, you know, beans and legumes and, you know, like big vegetables such as cauliflower, broccoli, sweet potatoes, you know, stuff like that. But in the beginning, we just like to have a soup and fruits and drinks. And then we we just have, you know, these two, three, four hours. So we need to be very, very good and, and plan, you know, what is it that we really want to to put into our body and also you know don't forget the fats you know having you know nuts and and having good oils and having a good avocados exactly avocados yes. and stuff like that yeah. is really really important in order for you to feel full you and know nourished. Because, yep. yeah because there's one thing you know just putting a lot of carbs in your in your in your in the system and you feel full but that fullness is just going to last for like around well let's say like two, three hours, and then it, you're going to feel hungry again. But if you make sure that you actually have the right amount of fat, good fats in your diet during Ramadan, then you are probably going to be able to fight off, you know, those hunger pains that are going to come, you know, like those last two hours of the fast during the fast. So true. So then as a mom and as a person training yourself, how do you stay active? with your kids despite being sluggish while fasting? I think for me, I have, you know, this rule for myself that I want to have like very, very, I want to have this scheduled play hour with my kids because if I do not schedule things in my life, then I know that they will not be carried out. So if I want to stay connected and, you know, have this, you know, bond with my kids, then I need to make them a priority. And making things a priority requires scheduling them in, okay? And for me, even if it's Ramadan or not Ramadan, that hour of of play with my kids is very important because we need to, we, we really get the opportunity to connect. You know, I, we throw balls at, uh, balls at each other. I have this Pilates, you know, medicine ball that we play a lot with. And I make sure that that hour is sacred for, for me and for them so that we really get to be with each other, you know, connect, you know, look at each other's eyes and, and, you know, make those brain cells, you know, really fire off, you know, in our brain, because whenever you actually look into someone's eye, you are, there's a lot of cool things happening in your brain. Now, I'm not, you know, very scientific. I'm not very well spoken in this area, but there are a lot of good things happening in your brain when you look someone in the eye. And that hour is, you know, the, the hour where I really connect with my kids. So even if it's not Ramadan, even if I feel tired and sluggish, I am going to take that and honor that hour of play, which I think I owe them and I want to give them. And you also want to plan, you know, what kind of activity do you want to do with your kid? Is it, you know, a slow activity? Is that something that's going to work for you during Ramadan? Or is it something, you know, that um, is going to be more, you know, high intense, which is perhaps something that is more aligned with the kind of person you are? So you need to find out, you know, what gets you going but 
try to stick, you know, to your old routines um, as much as possible, especially if it's a good routine, you know, where you have a certain play hour or some certain activity that you carry out throughout the year. So no differences there, I'd say. Awesome. I love that. I don't have kids. I can't really relate. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. as a only child with my mom, it's very, it's very true. We need to take time. And of course, I agree with your plan is if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's why it's important to take time to plan your Ramadan, to set goals and that are realistic and achievable. So keep them small. Don't over, don't make them too complicated. So for example, again, to going back to Salah, you know, do your best when it comes to Quran, focus on the quality over the quantity when it comes to your working out don't you know take it easy on yourself it's okay and then when it comes to nutrition like she said again look at your body look what you can do and you know take day at a day and every op- every moment in ramadan is an opportunity for self-growth mentally spiritually and physically so zahra do you have any final tips questions that i should have asked that you would like to share with us no i think We've covered good things, actually. And just remembering one thing from this talk is going to make your Ramadan a bit better, I think. So true. Thank you so much, Zahra. So where can we find you to keep up with your journey as well? You can find me on Instagram at at underscore underscore healthy wealthy underscore underscore. Uh, and I keep very, I'm very active on the stories there. So if you feel like you want some sort of a tip when it comes to working out and workout moves then uh, i post there regularly every day almost so yeah i hope to see you there yes guys make sure you follow her and and stay in tune thank you again zahra have a wonderful day and assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam thank you for tuning in if you've enjoyed this episode make sure to subscribe today and leave a five star review you can also screenshot and share this episode with a family or a friend. Be strong, be fit, be fit for Akhira.